Alistomania. The glass but see it grow. Hello everybody, it's the Lawn Gnome, and welcome to your August 2016 episode of 10 for 12. There will be a playlist provided in the box below, so you can take a look at all the other categories that I have tackled up until this point. So today I'm very excited, because not only am I going to be going into a very interesting topic, but this is another massive collab, and I haven't done one of these since, I think, last August. I have officially grouped up with some of the biggest fans of the topic that we are talking about today, and that is Disney villain sidekicks. And I am officially working on this collaboration with Rachel Wagner, Matthew Aaronholt, Sarah over at Sarah Ella, Casey over at A Basket, Casey Reads, and my friend Emma from Me, Myself, and M. And I just want to let everybody know that this doesn't necessarily have to mean sidekicks that are just part of the Disney canon classics. They were allowed to talk about live-action Disney villains. They were even allowed to talk about Disney villains from Pixar movies that are sidekicks as well. So sit back and relax, everybody, because it's time to talk about the top 10 Disney villain sidekicks, and I will be going only with Disney canon classics. Number 10 is Joanna the Salamander from The Rescuers Down Under. <laughs> I love her because of how devoted she is to her master, McLeach. But not just that, she is also voiced brilliantly by the great Frank Welker, and at the same time, her body language and her antics that she gets into throughout the entire film are great. There's so much slapstick involved, and the way that she plays off of her master sometimes in the film is definitely cute to watch. And even though she is a villain and she is kind of creepy to look at, she definitely does seem like a truly innocent little lizard. Number nine is Sour Bill from Wreck-It Ralph. Let's like sandpaper. I don't really know why I put him on this list. I think it's just because of the fact that he just seems to be that villain sidekick that you just want to scoop up and give a big hug to. Not necessarily do what Ralph did in Wreck-It Ralph, and if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but he just seems to be this really mopey guy that really wants to have nothing to do with King Candy's plans, and yet he follows him no matter what. And I think it's just his mopiness that really drives the appeal of this Disney villain sidekick. Number eight is a very interesting one. It is Doris or the bowler hat guy from Meet the Robinsons. Everyone will tell you to let it go and move on, but don't. I'm not going to explain as to why I mentioned it that way, but this is definitely a very interesting duo, especially in a very unique and very interesting Disney canon classic. And I love the way that they play off of one another. Just want to let everybody know that there will be duos in this countdown as well. So in this case, it's really hard to tell who in fact is the sidekick and who is the lead villain because they both play off of each other so well. And even though Doris is a non-speaking villain sidekick, she definitely has a very interesting role to play in that entire film. Number seven is Diablo. Now I know what you're thinking. Who in God's name is Diablo? I'll tell you who that is. It is Maleficent's Raven. Did you hear that, my pet? Another villain sidekick that really has no dialogue, but basically is depicted in stares and gawks and squawks, but even though this is just a plain old bird, you can truly tell that this is a bird that is just as evil as its master. And that, of course, is probably one of the scariest Disney villainesses of all time, and that, of course, is Maleficent. And when you do see this character in this film, you will definitely get a better understanding, especially now that you know its name, you may look at Diablo in a little bit of a different light. Number six is a duo, and it is Cruella DeVille's henchmen, Horace and Jasper. <laughs> Now listen, you idiots! Even though these guys just know that they're not really doing the right thing, they will follow Cruella de Vil till the ends of the earth. And I absolutely love the banter that they play off of one another. There's lots of slapstick involved between the two of them, with Cruella, with the Dalmatians as well. And they are just fun sidekicks to watch, especially when they're paired up with a truly evil Disney villainess. Number five... I hope I don't offend anybody, but it is LeFou. Gaston is the best and the rest is all the rest. 
And of course, that is Gaston's sidekick from Beauty and the Beast. Now listen, I'm sure a lot of you have probably ranked him and you've probably ranked him much higher than number five. But the only reason why he is at number five is just because I thought of four that are so much better. But LeFou is fantastic. I love his song about Gaston. I love how devoted he is to Gaston, even though Gaston wipes him across the floor like a mop. But he's still so loyal to his friend and he's... He just really is a fun guy to watch, and I think he also enhances Gaston's appeal in the film just because of the fact that, hey, Gaston is actually a friend with a stupid little lovable loser, and I think that's why I like him. Number four is Sir Hiss, Prince John's advisor, also voiced by the great Terry Thomas alongside Peter Ustinov voicing Prince John. I knew it. I knew it. I just knew this would happen. I absolutely love Sir Hiss and the chemistry that he has with Prince John because they really are like an old married couple. And I love how Sir Hiss is just as much of the brains of the outfit alongside Prince John. And I just love how he knows how to push Prince John's buttons to the point where he knows how to get him to just cower in a corner and suck his thumb. I absolutely love the fact that he is a very strong villain sidekick next to a pretty much of a joke Disney villain in Robin Hood. Number three is Iago. Boy, Jafar's gonna be happy to see you. Excellent work, Iago. Ah, go on. Now, again, he's only ranked at three because there are two that I think are better. Iago is just as devious as Jafar, but Iago is also voiced by Gilbert Gottfried. He is loud, he is brash, he wants to punch everybody in the face. Everything that Jafar is only thinking about but never will do, but Iago knows that if he has the power to push that force, he will push it, and he will definitely beat somebody up just because of how devoted he is to the cause of Jafar and just being a bad guy. Number two is Smee. Oh dear, 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 Kaepernick. Shooting a man in the middle of his cadenza? <laughs> oh dear, Smee. Captain Hook's first mate. How can you not love Smee? He is the most adorable villain sidekick that I think Disney has ever given us. And Captain Hook is not a villain that is just so terrifying and so deliciously evil. He is a bad guy, but he is just a villain that no one can take seriously because nothing but silliness and wackiness ensues whenever he is around the crocodile or around Peter Pan. And Smee is just a for the ride. He loves his captain. He will fight for his captain till the very end, and he will even put his own life on the line to make sure that Captain Hook lives another day. But why do I love him so much? He's just so sweet. That's all he is. He's just got a pure heart of gold for a Disney villain sidekick, and it shows that just because of how devoted he is to Captain Hook. And my number one, if there is anything that drives the film The Emperor's New Groove, it is Yzma and her sidekick, my number one Disney villain sidekick, Kronk. Feel the power. Oh, I could feel it. This character is without a doubt the most entertainingly laughable village idiot loser that I have ever seen in Disney film, but he is just so awesome. He is dedicated to Yzma's cause. He may have a few cars short of a full deck. He definitely has some hidden talents that people might find awkward, but at the same time, rather humorous. Every single time that he is on screen, I laugh. I can't contain myself because he's voiced by the great Patrick Warburton. He is awesome, and alongside Yzma, voiced by Eartha Kitt, they are a true villainous force to be reckoned with. And I think it was the nostalgia critic who said, why didn't they just make a movie of these two? Rather than making the main focus of this film on Pacha and Cusco, because Yzma and Kronk saved that movie. It is far from perfect, but it's because of these two villains, especially Kronk, the Disney villain sidekick, that truly 
creates all the laughs and all the good times of The Emperor's New Groove, and he is ever so popular that he has his own direct-to-DV movie, Kronk's Adventure. And those, ladies and gentlemen, are my 10 Disney villain sidekicks, of course, based on only Disney canon classics. So I thank every single one of you guys, Rachel, Emma, Sarah, Casey, and Matt. I am so excited to see what your choices are when all these videos go up. Please take a look at all of their channels, as all the links will be provided in the box below, and please put your comments in the box below in regards to Disney villain sidekicks. I think we're all going to have a great conversation about that topic if you do put comments in the box below. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I will see you in the next 10 for 12, and actions speak louder than words. I'm surrounded by idiots.